Hi, I'm Alex Young from NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, and I'm here today for a special report from NASA Goddard Space Weather Center. And I'm Jimmy Wong. I'm here as a high school intern at the NASA Goddard Space Weather Center. Uh, so, Alex, tell me um, what exactly is going on here. I know it's a solar flare, but considering they happen a lot, um, what is so significant about this? Well, this one is noteworthy because solar flares are rated on a scale much like Richter scale, so in, in group powers of 10. Mm -hmm. This is actually the largest ranking we have called an X-class flare. So what you see here, this is data from the Solar Dynamics Observatory, extreme ultraviolet light, and that flash you see is electromagnetic radiation, in this case extreme ultraviolet, for this X-class flare. And here's another example of extreme ultraviolet, but this is from the stereo spacecraft. So what's going on here is normally when we look at the sun with SDO, we're looking straight onto the sun. But we also have two spacecraft called stereo, stereo A and stereo B. The stereo A spacecraft is ahead of the Earth's orbit on one side of the sun. Stereo B is behind the Earth's orbit on the other side of the sun. In this case, we're looking at this with a stereo A spacecraft. So we're seeing the flare also from the side, not just from the front. Uh, so, um, about the solar flare, I did hear that there was a mistake when we were sending out the alert for the um, active region it came from. Well, yes, um, all of the active regions or sunspot groups that solar activity comes from are labeled with numbers. In this case, we call it AR for active region. And these two active regions are 11515, and this one is 11514. But you see that 14 actually disappears. Well, what happened was the label in most of the forecasting systems stayed there. And this particular part of the sunspot 1.5 moved over and was uh, incorrectly associated with 1.4. So when the solar flare occurred, it came from this area from 1.5, but in many cases it was originally labeled as 1.4. But all of the significant activity that we're talking about came from this sunspot group, AR11515. So I know these are CMEs. Can you explain exactly what CMEs are and what these have to do with the solar flare? Okay. Well, when the solar flare occurs and you see the bright flash of light, often what's, what happens is material is released, which is associated with the solar flare. We call that a coronal mass ejection. So that's billions of tons of solar material and magnetic field blasted away from the sun at speeds of roughly a million miles an hour or faster. And in this case, we use a different type of telescope, not as direct imager like before, but what we call a coronagraph. We block out the, the disk of the sun, which is far too bright in white light to see these fainter structures. And then we can see this wispy structure coming out. These are actually images of the solar, of the coronal mass ejection coming away from the sun. This is from the C2 coronagraph. And from the same spacecraft and instrument, we have a wider field of view with what we call C3. So I know that some CMEs can have an effect on Earth. What exactly is this um, diagram here, and what effect will this CME associated with the X-class flare have on our planet? Well, in this case, we're looking at uh, model of the CME's propagation showing us the, the speed and the direction and the amount of material that's moving through the solar system. Here you see the yellow dot, that's actually representing the Earth. And that active region that produced the flare and CME is off to the right side of the sun. And so basically things were pointed away from the Earth. And you can see that here when the coronal mass ejection leaves, you can see that it goes off completely missing the Earth to the side. So the CME itself is not going to have any uh, direct effect on the Earth. Um, so I know this is a graph of solar energetic particles, and uh, I see a few spikes going on here. How will this not affect our Earth? Well, in this case, solar energetic particles are also of concern. These are measured at Earth. So despite the fact that the CME went off to the side, we do, in fact, see solar energetic particles from these events. 
And what happens is the CME scoops up material and accelerates it kind of like a snow plow. And in this case, it's high energy protons, subatomic particles. We can see a rise here, and this is actually from the uh, event associated with this X1 flare. But it even goes up higher later, because uh, sure, the next day after the X flare, there was another smaller flare that still produced an even larger solar energetic particle event. Now these are not of any concern for us directly on Earth, because we're protected by both the atmosphere of the Earth and the magnetic field. But these are a concern, for example, for astronauts, or people that were in space can be exposed to high-energy radiation. Well, thank you for joining us, and uh, thanks for being here. I'm Jimmy, and stay tuned for the next big solar event. All of the data in this video is accessible from our Integrated Space Weather Analysis System, located at iswa.gsfc.nasa.gov.